Hi guys and welcome to the Blood Death Knight changes and reworks on the BFA Alpha. Like in my other tank videos, the Guardian Druid one, I'm going to be going through survivability talents first and then I'll be going for a full AoE build. I'll be explaining the changes to talents and spells. So I'll just get into it now and explain each of the talents. So this is what I uh, take for survivability. So first you have Blood Drinker which is like it was in Legion. but in Legion, it was literally healing you for about 60-70% of your health. It was healing for so, so much in dungeons. And they've just reduced that down. So you see, you get 3 million health on the target over 2.5 seconds. And you've only got 25k health. So obviously, it's not healing as much as it did in Legion. Obviously, healing a lot, but yeah. Then you have Heartbreaker. Heartbreaker generates 2 additional runic power per target hit. Obviously, what it was. Damage. But they bring back Bloodworms, like it was in, um, in Kata and Wrath. So your auto attack critical strikes have a chance to summon a bloodworm. Bloodworms deal minor damage to your target for 15 seconds and then burst, healing you for 15% of your missing health. If you drop below 50% health, your bloodworms will immediately burst and heal you for heal you. So this is t this to me is just insane. It's just so so good. I remember bloodworms back in the day, especially in PVE, it was just so so good. Especially due to the fact that ads aren't killing your bloodworms and they're just going to be chunking away at this at the. Um, at the ad, you're just not your blue worms aren't just gonna die, and if you you can save a lot of your blood worms, just just save them up until you know you don't have defensive. So if you don't have a lot of bone armors up, or you know that vampiric's off cooldown, ice burn fortitude and anti magic shell, you can just let your blood worms pop, and especially it's that the the fact that if you drop below fifty percent health, your blood worms will immediately burst heal you. It just allows you. It just allows you that safety barrier. It's like another. It's kind of like another purgatory due to the fact that once you drop below 50% health, they're just going to burst heal you. So it's really, really good, and I think Bloodworms is just OP. So I'm pretty sure they'll nerf that, but for the time being, I think Bloodworms definitely better than Heartbreaker and Blood Drinker. You're going to get way more damage out, da damage out of it, especially because they explode, and you're going to get way, way more healing. So for your next one, so Spectral Deflection, I'm not going to take this into consideration since it says not yet implemented. And to be decided, that's what that one means. Obviously, that will be changed when um, the alpha comes out. So next one, Death Strike extends the duration of Icebound Fortitude by two seconds. I didn't take this due to the fact that Icebound Fortitude has such a long cooldown, such so like three minutes. That extending it's just not going to do that much. And especially if you don't have, you don't physically have the runic power to get uh, a longer Icebound Fortitude. You just don't get the full use out of Heart of Ice. So that's why I take rapid decomposition. Like your death strike, your death and decay deals 15% damage. Deals damage 15% more often. And while in your death and decay, you generate one runic power every one second. So the, the survivability build I'm going for incorporates around. If I go down, just skip past this middle one for a second. Red first spending runic power will decrease the remaining cooldown on vampiric by one second per 10 runic power. So I'm trying to get as much runic power as possible to get my Vampiric back up cooldown, because Vampiric, once you've got Vampiric up, you're pretty much unkillable as a DK. You're going to do so much self in and going to be, be so, so tanky. So that's the aim of just spending as much Runic power on my Death Strikes and everything else as possible. Just so I'm getting red, red first, working more and more often. The other ones you get on um, on this talent tree's Tombstone consumes it to five Bone Shield charges. For each charge consumed, you gain six Runic power and blah, blah, blah. And absorb damage equal to 6% of your maximum health for 8 seconds. I don't like taking this due to the fact I want to keep as much bone shields up as possible. In BFA, there's been a really, really big push on blood DKs. And that in Legion, you're allowed to let your bone shields drop off now and then. But now it's really, really punishing. If you let them drop, you're going to be taking so, so much damage. So that's why Tombstone's not that good. Because you, again, you've got to build up your um, you got to build up your bone shield again using up runes. So that's why Red Burst is the best. And Mark Blood places a mark of blood on an enemy for 25 seconds, the enemy's damaging auto attacks will also heal their victim for 3% of the victim's maximum health. I don't like this due to the fact that these other talents are just going to be doing more for you than this mark of blood. I don't know if they'll increase the healing of um, of this to maybe 5%, but yeah, we'll see. But for the time being, red first. So on the middle one, the 58 talent, you have blood tap, uh, consume shadowy essence, maximum 2 charges, recharge time reduced by 2 per second whenever a bone drawn bone shield is active i don't like taking this and i like taking anti-magic barrier um more anti-magic shell also increases your maximum health by 25 percent of 10 seconds 
This means that now anti magic shield just becomes that ex just becomes an extra um, defensive. Even if there's not even if you're not taking spell damage, that anti magic barrier is just another defensive for you, which is just really really good. And Oshuri, where while you have at least five bone shields active, the cost of death strike is reduced by five root power. But obviously, when we since we've taken red first, it's just not going to be good because we want to be spending as much runic power as possible. Now for my next hunt tree, this is really down to you. But what you don't want to use is tremble before me. It's just really, really bad. Enemy damage while you're definitely just getting a chance to cower in place, especially when a target's coward. If you've got a dot class, the coward will either break all the dots or the coward will just not be non-existent because it's breaking because of the dots. So it's really down to you what you want. So there's March of the Damned, which is Wraithwalk lasts 100% longer and breaks everything. Obviously, this is really, really good, especially for tanks, because obviously if you get stunned, you're pretty much dead. But with this, it can break a stun. But one thing I like is Tightening Grass, so it reduces the cooldown on Gorfin's Grass by 30 seconds, like it did in Legion. But it, your Definite Decay also reduces the movement speed of enemies within it by 50%. This means that when you're using Rapid Decomposition, you can also kite all your targets. So when they're walking through this Death and Decay, they're going to be so slowed and taking so much damage from the Death and Decay. Even though you don't have that much speed, you can literally just kite them through the Death and Decay. And you're keeping up aggro on them because they're getting damaged. And you can just run. And just keep running and not being hit. Especially if you have no defensives up. You can just kite the pack. Obviously on a boss this wouldn't work. And March of the Damned would probably be better for a boss fight. But Tightening Graph is just really, really good. And Gorfin's Graph is obviously the spell which grabs everyone together, which is really, really good for all DPS. So for your next talent, Foul Bulwark, each charge increases, each charge of Bone Shield increases your maximum health by 2%. Like I said, you want to keep your Bone Shields up as much as possible, and Foul Bul Bulwark is just going to allow you to benefit more from Bone Shields, and you'll be just more and more tanky the more Bone Shields you have. So it kind of pushes you towards getting them Bone Shields up, and just, yeah, forcing you to do that. Rune tap, the same as it is in Legion, nothing changed. Consumer rune to reduce all damage taken by 40% for 3 seconds. This is good on certain fights, not many, so that's why Fel Bulwark's the best. Especially now there's been a massive push towards getting that bone shield, you want to take Fel Bulwark. Will of the Necropolis, just not, just not good. You don't really ever be want to be below 35% at any time, so yeah. Next, Bone Storm, same as it is in, um, in Legion really, nothing changed that. Blood Mirror, nothing changed on that, just useless again. And Purgatory. I always take Purgatory just because, you know, it's basically like a DH's last resort. It's just really, really good. So I'll just, I'll just show how tanky a DH, a DK, sorry, can get. So if I pop all my cooldowns, so I'll pop my Anti-Magic Shell, my Vampiric, and my Icebound, and we can see how much damage reduction I get. So if you use Anti-Magic Shell, Vampiric, Icebound, so you got 40k HP, and the um, Shield. And especially with my Self Heals Incorporated. I am just literally not going to be dying. And with my um, dancing room weapon, it's just going to be really, really good. So, I'll explain the rotation before we get into how you damage. But basically, you want to start as a DK and the fight. You always want to start now with dancing room weapon. So you can get as many bone shields up as possible. You just want the maximum. You just want to get 10 and then you want to start using your runic power really quickly. So you get the full your full use out of, um, out of your red first. So you're just going to want to be hitting these targets hard, using Heart Strike, and making sure you keep up Bone Shield at all times. Obviously, when you're going to get hit, your Bone Shield's going to go, so you need to make sure you're keeping that up. So now, instant, um, instant Death Decay. Just keep up all this. So this is what you want to be doing, but obviously, you're not going to be using Heart Strike as much as I am, because your Bone Shield's going to be dropping with your um, I'm out of range. With, the, with the auto attacks you're taking. But that's basically it for a for a DK. And now I'll get into the damage talents you want to just do really big damage. So you want to take Heartbreaker due to the fact you're going to get more runic power to spend on everything else really. So Death Strike and whatever. So if I just quickly get that out of combat. Okay, and I'll use my quick time. So you want to take Heartbreaker. And for this, Rapid Decomposition again is good because obviously you're going to sit you're going to sit adds in your Death and Decay, and obviously if they're taking more damage in that Death and Decay. It's just really, really good for you. Again, anti-magic barrier. Especially because we're going to be using Bone Storm now. And that's going to use up your... Um, that's going to use up um, runic power. We just don't want to be using that. We want to be using your... Um, we want to be using anti-magic barrier just for that extra HP and that extra survivability. So next, you want to take red first again. Due to the fact this build, you're going to be spending a lot of runic power. 
a lot, a lot of runic power, so that it gets even more of an effect for your vampiric blood, and you're going to get that up quicker, and you're going to survive more, and it's just going to be really, really good for the whole group. Next, you want is a tightening grasp again, due to the fact that you can pull all the adds together, and just do big damage to them, so grip them all together, and then you can obviously heart strike, and you can put down the death and decay, so all targets are in your death and decay, and they're getting slowed, and taking loads of damage from rapid decomposition. So next, what you want to take is um, Foul Bulwark again, due to the fact that you're going to have Bone Shields, and obviously them increasing your health up is just going to be really, really good. Um, next, you just, yeah, Bone Storm all the time. You're going to be doing so much damage with Bone Storm, especially once you've used Gore Fiends. So you just want to make sure that you're just using your Bone Storm when you've got as much, um, when you've got as much Runic power as possible. You mainly want to be using it around, maybe around 50. So that you can use it and then use a um, an extra death strike soon after. So you can use a death strike soon. Use. You got to make sure as well that you keep your um, keep your blood plague on the target. So obviously, as you can see, because that, that target was in my death and decay, it was slowed. So I could could have could have charted it. But basically, this is it for DKs. So they're not as they're not going to be as they're not going to deal as much damage as they did in um, Legion. But they're going to be as 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 survival as. As tanky as they were in Legion, if not more, especially with the um, with the uh, anti magic barrier. So it's just more in the fact that DKs you're bringing DK just to the fact they're going to survive loads. And mobility is still cooked, but but although you have death advance, which allows you to you know not get slowed, it's just DKs are just the man made tank. They're just not going to die. They're not going to do as much DPS now, especially after some of the changes to their talents. But they're just not going to die. They're going to be up for just so long. Dealing. Yeah, just not going to die. They're going to be a, a man mountain. So yeah, that's it for the Blood DK guide. If you want more guides, then like and subscribe. And comment if you want me to change anything for future videos. And see you in the next one.